I'm Caleb. <laughs> and I'm Haley. And I'm having coffee with my ex. Um, How does it feel doing it by yourself? Do you feel lonely? It feels lonely. lonely. I didn't like yeah, that. Yeah, I bet. It felt hollow yeah. and empty. <laughs> like it did the day he left me. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm pulling up my notes right here because I had a spurt of energy the other day. Whenever I'm drinking, I immediately want to start working. That's when we get the most work done it's, and our best work. <laughs> it really, which is scary, which means we're like an artist, one of those artists that will crash and burn in their late 20s. 100%. We Hello. would plan whole ass tours. Oh, yeah. Just drunk. The best thing. I mean, this is probably not a good way to like start off the episode <laughs> when we left it off that we, Corey, I, I like did everything high. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what? I just realized, Cameron, can I have my teeth? Can you grab my Invisalign? Because I, I don't like the way I look right now. And I know that if you're just oh. listening, you can't see me, but I don't look great. I look, look a little gappy. Um, I made gappy. up a bunch of different topics for us to kind of like go over loosely. And I made some bullet points. I was very proud of myself. And we I just, haven't done shit. Like, I don't, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I don't even know what we're talking about, really. We have a shared <laughs> note on iCloud. And it as oh, literally. Oh, is that where you're putting it? Yeah. And it was left empty. Oh. So I was like, I guess I'll fill in the blank. I thought that that was just for like off. Like one off topics. I didn't know we were writing whole ass like outlines in there. I, w- I expected treatment on my desk. <laughs> Thank you, babe. Hold on, I'm putting my teeth in. Let me do that for the audience. Ew. Ew, stop. Please. <laughs> God. <clears throat> oh, golly. How is your, um, like, how is your, how has it been at, on, <laughs> on, on, on your home base since I've seen you? So I've been working on this puzzle. It's all I talk about. It's all I think about. I dream about putting pieces together, finding the piece that I've been looking for this entire time. And it's an, it's a thousand pieces and it's a very complex, there's like probably 50 different butterflies that I'm trying to put together. I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. I'm having a terrible time and I can't stop. And it's, so I'm just like stuck in this purgatory of like putting this puzzle together and I, I, need, it, I need it to be over. Uh, it, it, I, here's my thing. I don't understand the payoff of puzzles. I think I told you this last night. What is the point? There's literally nothing that is accomplished at the end. Ex- I don't know. Except you destroy it. You build it up to break it down. I saw everyone doing puzzles. I saw Drew and Linda doing all these puzzles. And I'm like, I'm going to do a puzzle. I can do it. And I thought a thousand pieces was going to be like no problem. I thought that was like easy. Like, no, yeah, a thousand pieces. And then I opened up the box and I was like, I couldn't like really visualize what a thousand meant apparently because it is a lot. <laughs> that seems so dumb to me. Like I feel dumb. Here's the thing. I feel stupid playing like video games because I'm like, oh, you're wasting your time. You're not accomplishing anything productive at the end of the day. But at least I have like evolved Pokemon to show for it. You have nothing. You can't even hang it up. Well, okay. Okay. Let's. The reason why I think the puzzle is a good idea is because if not, I will just sit on my phone all day. It's a good way to give my eyes a break from the screen. Okay, that's a fair argument. Have you seen, speaking of eye break, eyes break from the screen, have you seen the uh, things lately about the blue lights? The blue light protectors? Yeah, what is that about? That is a bunch so of baloney. stupid. I think it's so people so are like stupid. using it as like a selling point for like glasses and shit. It's like blue light protection. And maybe I'm just a moron. Or a skeptic. Yeah, we're gonna like die from it. <laughs> I literally go blind from blue light. I just, I yeah. think I remember reading about it, and it's like, I mean, it's fine. It's blue light. Maybe like it helps. It it prevents you from going to sleep. I think. So maybe if you're wearing it at night when you're on your phone, but then just like use the night shift mode to take out the blue light that's built into your phone. I just feel like it's such a. But what's so wrong with blue lights? I think the idea is that blue light prevents you from pre- producing melatonin. I could be wrong on this, but I think it's why mm-hmm. they're like, don't use your phone at night because your brain can't go to sleep. That's why on iPhones now, and I think on all phones, there's a night shift mode to take out the blue light and make it warm to help well, you. Well, okay. Well, okay. This is where, okay, well, okay. Well, this is what I have to say about that. <clears throat> if I can't go to sleep because I'm on my phone, then why do I literally fall asleep scrolling on TikTok? That's what I want to know. Because you that's the case. Because you're physically exhausted. Your tank is empty. <laughs> <laughs> you just shut down immediately. <laughs> I'm dead. Uh, I decided to take, I think I'm going to participate in TikTok a little bit more this week because I took, Cameron's been doing my schedule 
so that I know exactly what I'm doing every day because I'm 12 years old and I have a very, very ADHD brain. AD, I think more ADD brain is what I was diagnosed with. And it's helped me, so I got all my stuff done. So Cameron booked us to have the, <laughs> booked us, he, he gave us the next four days off. So I feel like I'm on vacation, but like I'm still doing coffee with my ex. I'm still like doing little things here and there, but I don't have a staycation. So, a staycation because Mama's been mentally unstable and she needs a break. <laughs> Literally anything at this point can like set me off. I swear to you, I'm on. I'm I'm off the deep end. Watch as I dive in, <laughs> and this bitch is about to meet that. the ground. So. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm really excited to take this little break and just chill for I actually, years. I know we just talked about our anxiety episode last week, but mm-hmm. honestly, talking about anxiety last week helped me with my anxiety last week. Really? Yeah. It was very therapeutic for me, even though I really didn't like have much to say. I think I said more than I usually would. <laughs> And I really enjoyed like all the responses. Like I felt very, dare I say, validated in mm-hmm. <laughs> in all my anxiety. I just I didn't realize how many people felt the same way, and so it was yeah. really reassuring to hear people agree. There is power in community. I'm telling you what. And as it surprised me to read the comments to see how many um, women were going through the same thing on their periods, because I had no idea. Yeah how real that yeah, was you texted for me and you were like i could not imagine having what did you say what i said i say? cannot imagine once a month having my emotions completely taken over by something like how <laughs> yeah. how awful that sounds dreadful and it's like i just i that reading those comments made me want to talk about it more because people need to know that periods are real <laughs> And people go through them every month and we pretend that they don't but they do and it's not okay it's not okay <laughs> I was like literally petition to stop periods forever. (laughs) I will lead that bandwagon. I was devastated in bed, like thinking about it. Like I was getting so anxious being like, what if this happened to me? (laughs) So I'm I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm so sorry. Um, What coffee are you drinking today? I am drinking. Well, Cameron got some from Trader Joe's. I think it's, I don't know what it was, but it was organic and we ran out of, The groundwork coffee and all the Costco coffee. I swear to you, we bought (laughs) like six pounds of coffee and it's gone. I know. You guys drink a lot of coffee. It goes so quickly. I don't know what's happening. Um, (laughs) I still have the Costco coffee and it slaps. The Costco coffee? Yeah. It slaps. The Kirkland brand, the organic brand, it's great. And I left it in for 20 hours this time because I usually Mm -hmm. only do like 14. That that. is too weak. And it's so much better. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's so, like I'm I am blown away. I'm gonna do a TikTok on how to make how I make my cold brew because I feel no like you're not because I have that already filmed Don't and I'm it's in Final Cut Pro right now. Too long, no. <laughs> no, you're literally <laughs> stealing <laughs> from my ideas. You know what I want to do? I want to do that. I was actually having this vision because sometimes when I get on TikTok and I see everyone doing creative things, I get anxiety because I'm like I should be doing creative things and why can't I do this and. All that. So I thought of an idea for that one. I want to make the cold brew. I'm like, don't think we could do long. No, I'll make a cup of coffee. And then it says for your head, right? Yeah. Right. So after I make right. all the coffee, I'm going to like grind it. It's going to be really aesthetically pleasing and cute. I'm going to pour the coffee in the cup. And then as soon as it's, and I'm going to be like walking it to Cameron. And as soon as it says for your head, I'm going to dump it on his head. <sighs> He's listening to this. Oh, shit. <laughs> He'll never expect it. He'll never see it coming. <laughs> that is I'm, risky. I'm sure that's been He'll done be before. Your ass. I know it'll be my ass, but <laughs> it's for the content, you know? <laughs> Relationships be damned. <laughs> I have a cat hair in my throat. There is so much. I don't, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. getting off. Not a, a dog hair. I'm getting off topic, but there is so much hair around this house. It's driving me crazy. Juice has to get groomed. He has to get groomed. <laughs> I am finding coffee in my fridge. You I find mean, coffee in your fridge? Never mind, I just need a drink. <laughs> I'm not okay. I'm finding hair in my fridge. I'm finding dog hair in my fridge, on my pillow. I mean, obviously on my pillow, but just like literally on the stove, like, un- like under the burner. I'm like, has juice been under the burner? How? <laughs> I find cat hair everywhere. I mean, it, it's all the time. It's, you guys, if you could see the top of her fan in her kitchen. Oh, it's 
It it's looks so bad. No, I actually ordered a Swiffer duster because oh. I like looked at it the other day. I was like, I can't look at this anymore. It looks like, like she a cat. bought a rug. It looks like a cat. It looks there. like there are like <laughs> six kittens just up there. And a few of them no, have tails. No, I haven't tails. cleaned it one time since I moved in like nine months ago. I had to. But, but tomorrow's the day. Is tomorrow the day? Because I want to see <laughs> Tomorrow's receipts. the day. Those, that, those poor blades are so weighed down. I can't imagine how hard it is for them to spend. I will send you before and after pictures. <laughs> I'm I'm disgusted. You know how much of a clean freak I am, but I'm just it's a lot of work you and I don't see it. So I don't think about you it. Want about my house, but my fan would never look like that. We you don't, don't have even have a fan. <laughs> but if we did. <laughs> oh my gosh. Speaking of having fans. <laughs> Now that we're, you know, established YouTube creators and, dare I say it, uh, the most popular creators in the world. (laughs) In the world. Uh, I wanted to Uh. go back and talk about some of our first, like, experiences in the industry. And I think more than our first experiences, but, like, now looking back, what, like, what the tea is, what the truth is, and how it compares to kind of what we thought it was going to be when we were getting into this mess. <laughs> oh, yeah. T. Um, so back, what, so we started this five years ago. So we've been, we've been around the block a little bit, right? I yeah, think we have. the first thing that we really ever experienced when we were like thrown into this world probably was VidCon, right? Yeah. Was I'd that like the so. defining moment for you when you were like, oh my gosh, I'm in this world now? I was freaking out. Like, do you remember? I was crying. Yeah. Oh I my was god. Dead ass. There's a vlog of her crying. And tears. <laughs> I was in tears because it's all I ever wanted. It's all I ever wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and I got there, and I was like, "This is like, this is it. This is like, this is where I want." We. I had a. I had a <gasps> community <laughs> pass. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I had a community pass, which anyone off the street could have bought and went into VidCon. Right. But still. <laughs> It was the principal. <laughs> but it was the principal. I was there and I met so many people. Mm-hmm. I met people I had looked up to for like like 10 years. Like yeah. I just I was for I was blown away. I was freaking out. I felt like it was a really surreal moment for me. Yeah. In a weird it was VidCon like relax. You know what? <laughs> it was bizarre because I think when you are like we're, we're from Indiana. So it, everything in that world seemed so unreal and untouchable. And then you fly yeah. there. We weren't even living in LA. No, we would just went. And I think, like, obviously the magic was still there, but it was just so bizarre being like, oh, it's just r- real people and like a different yeah. part of the. It's just, I feel like sometimes when you dream about other places, they almost seem like they have magic and sparkle and they're, it's like this otherworldly land. And then you get there and you're like, oh, they're just like me. They're just in a different part of this country. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, it was a bizarre moment where it was, everyone was so real and like those mm-hmm. boundaries were taken down. Well, not all the boundaries because there were some VIP areas that we did not get into. <gasps> no. <laughs> a, a VidCon loves boundaries. <laughs> we, that we did though. We snuck in, right? And to the Studio 71 st- party? <laughs> they're, our, they're our partner now, so <laughs> we uh, can get those passes. But we did um, maybe swap a few bands to get up. We like we're exchanging the VIP bands. We shouldn't have been in the actual party anyway, no. let alone in the VIP So Somehow area. we got in the party, and then I like went up, and I, someone gave me a VIP band, and I slipped it off. And then like they went down and get, passed it off to Haley. It was for I'm, context. The Studio Seventy One party is like the big party. It's the big party. Yeah, I didn't even explain that. If you weren't there, yeah. you might as well go home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like the point. I feel like it's what I get most excited about. It's literally like going to the club with every influencer you know. I swear to you, everyone's there. Yeah, even the everyone's good pe- even the goody good goody goodies. <laughs> oh, the goody goodies. That's where I met Alicia Marie for the first time. Yeah. I saw like Remy was there and like, I mean, everyone that I've ever loved was there. And I was like, I saw Alicia Marie walk in and I was like, oh my God, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say hi. Like, I can't say hi. Like, I'm too nervous. I and then I saw that. her in the bathroom and I was like, oh my God, like I, she's in the bath. I had to say something. I was just like, <laughs> I was freaking out. And Bria was in the bathroom. Like, is she going to do it? Is she going to do it? <laughs> And I was like, hi, like, my name is Haley. I love you so much. Like, I love your vlogs. You work really hard. I really appreciate your content. And she was like, so nice. 
And that was like one of the first, that was like one of the hardest things I've ever done. Didn't you meet Manny there as well? <laughs> yes, we met Manny for the first time. I just, we just said hi, I think. Oh my gosh, I just. That's like the weird thing about it is like whenever you're meeting someone and, the, and like you're in the same space as them. Like mm-hmm. you're all there for the same reason. But they have no idea who you are. And you, and it's weird because like I don't want to like ask for pictures because I'm not really right. like, like that anyway. But, but because we're all creators here, like, I, I feel so weird asking for a picture. I don't know why. But no, I just, yeah. like, how do you make those those interactions meaningful? I don't know. That's, like, know. the hardest part is, like, saying, like, hi, like, I love you. Like, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't say hi to people because I'm That's, terrified. It's so hard. It's so, but yeah. also, imagine if anyone ever said hi to you, you would be so excited and, like, oh, thank you for right. saying hi. Like, hi, what's up? It's just, we're all, it's us. It's, we're the problem. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I know. But it's, I feel like going back from that moment to now, it's so, I feel like it's, we're finally at the point where we feel like we are cemented in this world, at least. And mm-hmm. I think maybe last year when I went to Creator Summit, that's what really did it for me, getting yeah, to that was like, big. be in that space. Because now it's just, it's so much less scary and it's so much more like going to a work conference, I feel like. Yeah. It's just like we're all in the same job and that's all there is to it. I feel like the longer we're here, the less like mystery and magic and like everything is untouchable and the more it's just like every this is just everyone's career and we're just in the same space and we're co-workers i literally look at it like yeah we're what's so weird about it is that yeah like we're like co-workers we work in the same space but part of like the working together like you have to like collaborate a lot of the times and that includes like friendship and it's hard to tell like who is who is like my friend mm-hmm. and who is my like co-worker or can you be both and it's a really fine like balance i feel like a lot of people have a trouble in this space not us necessarily because we're not like huge into the youtube com- we don't have ver- a lot of youtube friends i wouldn't say but like you I think, think about like we have we have a good amount but i feel like we we're so personable we can't imagine just like working with someone yeah that's true we're like we have to be friends with them <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, we just, no one we talks just to have us. to <laughs> they don't want the commitment. <laughs> you know, I. But I think that's a really interesting part about YouTube is that like the friendships are like it, they go hand in mm-hmm. hand, like being a friendship and a coworker. I'm so it makes happy for you said content. that. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's there is this perception on YouTube that all these people are friends, and I think I always thought that. And I think a lot of them are, but the more we do collabs or work with people, I'm like what does this mean? Cause like we only talk if we're doing something like for the channel. Yeah. And so, yeah. but uh, so it, it is more like a work friend because you have those friends at, I'm that when people have normal jobs that you just talk to about work things and you still like each other and it's fun, but it's right. still more professional. So I think it's definitely more like that. I never understood why people didn't want to do collabs with people they didn't know or like weren't really friends with. And I was like, that's just dumb. Cause I mean, it helps your channel grow, but it also is right. like a mind trip because you don't know what's real. Yeah, I feel like it's like within like the first couple of meetings, you it's kind of hard to navigate. Okay, like, oh, okay, so that's what this is. This yeah. is like a working relationship, which is fine. But then you have people who like want to work and hang out. You're like, oh, okay, so you're in this group. Right. You kind of have to like categorize these people. It's like filing It seems cabinets. really shallow, but it's just like how it is. It really is. And it's weird getting yeah, too, because when you're doing those collabs and stuff, you have to have chemistry. You have to act, even if you're not good friends, like your friends. And I think everyone yeah. in this space is really good at being personable. So everyone can turn that on, but it's just, I guess I get, since I am a very insecure person, and I swear to you that, I feel like I have to impress everyone. I feel like I'm never, I would never be someone's pick, which probably is why, because in middle school, I was never picked in dodgeball. And it all stems back to that. But I always feel like I have to impress people that people don't really like me. And so Uh I, it's really hard for me to put myself in those situations and make those connections when I feel like, I don't know what's real. the, The other day I was talking about like, I don't know, having a birthday party or something. And I was like, I don't know who, or my wedding. And I was like, I don't know who my real friends are. Like, who would I invite? Like, oh, who's yeah. actually my friend? <laughs> and who's just like a social media friend? I don't know. And it's, yeah. 
but that's also my own problem because I get way too in my head about that it stuff. It is. It really is your own problem. <laughs> I was really, I was like, wow, buddy, you got me. You know. I was like, does anyone, is, does anyone, is anyone really my friend? Does anyone like me? <laughs> I'm dead. Um, I'm dead. So as far as the people that you've, you've come across, because I feel like this is a, a really interesting topic. Do you think most people are the way that they are in real life? Like they I are. I do. Life? Yeah. I do. I think that we all have an understanding that, that we're not as animated when we're filming. Right. Like, so whenever I see someone and they're like a way toned down version of their online self, I'm like, okay, thank God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, like no one wants to walk around like, hey guys. You know what I mean? Like, that's, just, that's not, I don't, no one wants to be around that 24-7. <laughs> I feel like that's why I love meeting people because I just want to show them that I'm not like that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I bet. Could yeah. you imagine? <laughs> I mean, some people. Who is someone though that I feel like is always like that? Like, who's someone online who you can't imagine not being toned down? Like, if you met, who is there anyone we've met who's really? Wait, just, what do you mean? Is there anyone we've met who's just really as animated as they are? Rosanna. Rosanna. <laughs> Oh, I love Rosanna her. Pacino. I have a, no. I have a list of people that we need to talk about that we've met. <laughs> oh, <laughs> then it, which I think this All segues. Right. I think this segues into it. So we've um, okay. Obviously, had the chance to come across a lot of people. We've done VidCon. We've done the streamies last year. I feel like now we have quite a few like friendships and like if not yeah. friendships, like acquaintances or people that we're very friendly with. And so I wanted mm-hmm. to talk about a few of them, and and yes. and just say how we feel. <laughs> So, all right. The first up, first person we ever really met in this space was Cassie Ho, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I will never forget the day that you called me. I was like at Macy's. Riley was like watch shopping, and I was like freaking out in the middle of Macy's in the watch section because she had called, she had emailed you or something like to come down to her office. So, well, and also Cassie Ho, if you guys don't know, is Blogalotti's on YouTube. Um, almost at five million subscribers, an OG YouTuber. The go, the go. I posted a video during my, I mean, I swear to you, it was like the depths, deep, darkest depths of my anxiety spiral. Like, yeah. and I posted a vlog about just feeling really insecure. And she, out of nowhere, tweeted at me. And she was like, hey, I watched your vlog. Like, you know, I want you to know that like, we all go through that. We all feel the same way. And I was like, one, it's Cassie Ho. Two, she's watching my vlog channel, which has like 50,000 subscribers. <laughs> like, why yeah. is she watching my <laughs> yeah. vlog? She know what? So that was she's bizarre. reading so up I on you. DM'd her back, and I was just like freaking out because she followed me then on Twitter, and I was like, "Whoa there, whoa there, buddy!" So I went in a very non creepy way to YouTube and her about me on YouTube and found her address of her like mailing address because <laughs> 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 I was interested to see like okay where is she at, and she was right down the street from my apartment. Like her office was right yeah. there. So I DM'd her and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like not to be creepy, but like you're really close to me. And she said, oh my gosh, no way. Just like come down to the office on Tuesday and like we'll give you a tour and hang out. And I said, what? And she would, that was the (laughs) first ever time that like a YouTuber, like they reached out, like she reached out to me, made a point Uh to take the time out of her day. She has so many different businesses and things she has her hands in. She took the time out of her day to give me a tour and just like literally her and Sam just sat down and talked to me for like an hour. Mm -hmm. And they got nothing out of this. It was just, they knew I was new and they were nice. And that- They're just, they're very kind people. Yeah. They're very kind. That really, really stuck with me because that wasn't something that was public. Like no one like knew that they were doing that. It was just them being good people. And so that was a moment that I was always very grateful for. Cause mm-hmm. I don't, and still to this day, I mean, obviously now that we're established, no one could really do that again, but it was just really sweet that they were the first ones to really do that. Yeah. Um, and they helped us out a lot. They helped us out with like studio space. Like they were always so nice to us. Oh my gosh. I didn't even think about, why did I not think about that? Yeah. They let us use their studio all the time to shoot all videos and whatnot. And it, yeah, just very grateful. If you watch on YouTube, a lot of our videos are shot in her studio. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. So lots of exciting things. And there's more that, I mean, we're still like doing stuff together that we're really excited to, yeah. you know, talk about. And that's yeah. just a really cool friendship that we have. Um, all right. Next yeah. up. 
<laughs> yeah. uh, Matt Stefanina. Oh, Matt. What was the first? Oh, what, Matt. When was the first time you met Matt? Was at VidCon. And it was like such a long time coming because I had always like missed him. Like you had, you guys had met like a million times or whatever, mm-hmm. and I wanted to meet him so badly, and I kept missing him. Same happened with Allison. Like it was like this, like Matt Stefanina. I'm never gonna be Matt Stefanina. Um, so when I met him, took a very drunk picture with him. Yes, you did. And <laughs> I feel like I only see Matt when I'm drunk. <laughs> is that, yeah, is that a fair statement? <laughs> yeah, it is. Except we did film a collab. Yeah, we did. We weren't drunk then. No, that was no. crazy. The way that he uh, he like inhaled that choreography and like that was it. It was on like there was like a half hour space. He was shooting collabs all day, and we were just a little half hour <laughs> section in his day. He like watched Caleb do it once, and he was like, "Okay, he let's do it." He wasn't even planning on being in the video, and he just jumped in because he, he was, wasn't. He was planning on being in one of them, not both of them. He was just being nice and jumped in the other one. That's so cute. I think Matt. Um, <laughs> I feel like we've never had the chance to really like hang out with Matt one on one and for like an extended period of time it's always at like parties or events. But yeah. I swear to you for as many subscribers as that man has, I think over 10 million. I mean, yeah. he is so cool and so yeah. nice. And it's He's just chill. I enjoy his presence. So he's very easy. It's like he's so chill. It's like I'm almost taken aback by it. And also with him being yeah. straight, like I don't like it's <laughs> it's hard for me. I mean, I don't approve of his <laughs> lifestyle choices being heterosexual, but it's um it's so funny cuz like with him being a straight dude, I just assumed it would be really hard to connect with him. I never assumed that, that I would be able to just talk to him and it would be easy, but He's just such a nice, genuine, like down to earth guy. And yeah, I, he's like and so a, talented as well. So talented. It's insane. Every time he's around, he always just like makes sure he says hi. He um, will like comment on stuff randomly on Instagram or like he invited us to a Super Bowl party every year. Like he just yeah. he's like someone who's like taking the time to be like, hey, I want you around. Like, hey, like I acknowledge you. It's it's he's yeah, it's been really cool. Yeah, he's very cool. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, we don't have, like, bad things to say about people. No, I know. It's, I mean, I'm sure I could. His I last mean, video, he name, stole I... all of my dance moves. <laughs> 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 um, another really cool person that we met was Rosanna Pansino. Yes. And <laughs> I cannot say enough things about this woman. She... <laughs> enough, good, enough good or bad? Like, what does that enough mean? Enough. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful things i have never had such a good time when i'm around someone she is a firecracker she's a, a firecracker and i i love it hadn't really watched like her content before i knew her audience was more like young and she would like make cooking videos and stuff like that so i imagine her to be just this very sweet girl who just like was very proper and didn't have much to say and when i met her for the first time she was a firecracker I mean, she, I don't, like, I'm not even going to go into it, but it's just, like, she is so funny, so quick. She has so many stories, and I swear to you, she could talk to you about the most random thing. Like, the last time I saw her at VidCon, she talked to me, and this might have been, like, the third time that I had met her in person. She called me over. I was walking by. Again, this is someone with, like, 10 million subscribers plus so in up in the youtube world and she's like hey come over come sit with us and cameron and i came and sat down with her and husky and she talked to us i swear to god about naked and afraid for 45 minutes and (laughs) i have never been so invested in a conversation in my life there were twists and turns ups and downs it was better than watching it so animated and yeah just every time i see her she's so sweet so nice like she's always like i want to do a collab so bad like when can we do it and she's so yeah. busy, but she, I don't know. She always is just taking the time to make, uh, make me feel like I was just as worthwhile as anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like thinking, like, I'm always like at the end of everything. I'm like, they made me feel like I was worth their, like I wasn't a piece of shit. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I think I need to go back to therapy. <laughs> they really oh, do. My God. Someone that you, I want, this is your story to tell that you met was Mikey Glam and Gore. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I 
always forget about that because I didn't really know who she was before I met her. And it was so weird. We were at VidCon, right? Yes. We were at, at the YouTube party. At the YouTube party. And her and her like manager or something came up to me. They wanted my they needed my earring for something. And I was I was plastered. <laughs> I had no, I am I, I mean I had no idea what they're talking about. Something about someone getting engaged. They needed my earring. My earring looked similar. I literally don't understand the story still. <laughs> but this 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 gorgeous human came up to me. So gorgeous. And <laughs> she's so, so gorgeous. gorgeous it hurts. And needed my earring and then then her manager was like, We'll give you money for it. And I was like, this is this <laughs> I was like, these earrings are from Pro 21. These couldn't have been more than 250. Here. <laughs> Here you go. And apparently, like, I was like, I saved the day. I still, I don't know how. I don't know why. But we danced all night. And that's, I mean, we had a great time. And I love her to death. She followed you on follow Instagram. And we still chat. She followed Allison. Yeah. And, like, she followed me. It and was- I, like, I... I subscribed to her. I was like, I really love your content. I didn't like. I literally didn't know who she was before. And she's. And now I can't imagine life without her. I love her. <laughs> she's massive. I swear to you that I saw her in Whole Foods last week. I mean, like I couldn't be you sure. You probably did. But I like looked over and I was in the Burbank Burbank um, Whole Foods and I saw curly hair and I don't know why. Immediately I was like, it's Anthony. And it, oh yeah, it's Anthony Padilla. Is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. And I had only seen him like quickly on Philip DeFranco. And so I didn't really know who he was, but I don't know why that registered. And then I looked back as I was like leaving and I saw next to him this tiny little uh, girl with short blonde hair and a mask and just eyes that belonged on a Barbie doll. And I was like, that's yeah. gotta be Mikey. That's, that's Mikey. That's fucking Mikey. <laughs> so that is Mikey. again, very sweet human. I remember, like, I walked past her, like, later, like, the next day in the hotel as she was telling someone the story of it all, of me. <laughs> <laughs> the story of me. And then I me. walked up to her, and I was like, hi. And she's like, this is, this is her. This is her. Like, talking to whoever she was talking about. I was like, I still don't know what happened. <laughs> that is so- No idea. What? Oh, my gosh. My logic just, like, disappeared, and I thought that it, like, forced quit, and I almost started crying. Okay. <clears throat> We're good. Are you, good. Are you back? Okay. Um, I, wanna, I do want to mention, I do want to mention um, some of my favorite people that I have met, which are the Try Guys. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> so, I got oh to go God. to, last year, I got to go to Creator Summit, which was... It's like the thing that YouTube that YouTube hosts every year and they invite like a certain group of YouTubers. I don't even want to say the top YouTubers because I really don't know how these people get picked because not everyone has a bunch of subscribers. I think it's just people that YouTube genuinely likes and wants to help promote. Um, and so I went there and they went, let me, I mean, Allison, Haley, Cameron, nobody could come. I, it was like one person comes, you're going solo. And I was terrified. God, you had so much anxiety. Because at that point, I still felt like I was... I would have, too. I felt like such an outsider. Like, I don't know anyone besides, I think, Sam and Cassie and, like, Katie and Sean. Katie Morton. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah, you guys, Katie Morton's also one of my favorite people in the world. Love her Honestly, so much. she's one of my favorite people on the planet. She's a, she's a real one. She is a, she's a real, one. real one. She was in uh, Shane Dawson's uh, docuseries. That's why I saw her for the first time. I actually... Yeah. Um, <laughs> I emailed her to do a collab after I saw that and I never heard back and I was like oh she hates me and then I emailed her again and I didn't hear back and I was like oh god she hates me but I think it went to someone I'm not sure if, it, if she got it or if she was just like who's this guy but when I actually met her, in her. Per- <laughs> I, yeah, I'm gonna confront her when I actually met her in person um, I was so scared that she like knew who I was and didn't like me and then <laughs> here's the theme of the day um, yeah you have a problem <laughs> I wasn't so scared. I was just like intimidated because I really respected her, I guess, is the better way to phrase that, which is the truth. And yeah. And she has been like, she's like one of our best friends now. She is so sweet. Yeah. She's been in videos. Anyways, try guys. Um, we, <laughs> <laughs> getting so sidetracked. Um, so when I got there, I don't know how I met Eugene, but I, that was like the first try guide that I had met. Cause I think I was just hanging around the gays and Eugene was there. And uh, this is really late in the night. This is also when Alicia and Remy were in front of me, like doing shots, and I had no idea. And <laughs> then, like, uh, Manny and Joey and Eugene are like in this room taking photos. And somehow I get in this group. And uh, Eugene and I just were like hanging out the whole time. He was being really mm-hmm. nice to me, really sweet. Um, mm-hmm. It was just really real. And I'd never like talked, like, heard about, I heard about them, obviously, but I met Keith. 
at the at the I love Keith and he I remember we were this was like towards the end of the night things were getting really dark and hazy and hazy I remember like dancing like Keith was around and I was like oh my god and he wanted to get a picture with me to send to his wife and I was like are you serious do you know are you sure it's me and you're not looking for somebody else and we just like hung out I met Ned I met Zach I met Eugene all of all of them were such real people I swear to you there was like this one party where it was so packed you could not it was like a conga line to move anywhere it was awful and I just talked to Ned for a long ass time he was just like hanging around like we were like walking around together and it was just so weird to be around people who were just such real they are the same that they are on their channel even almost as animated but just like yeah I don't even know how to describe it I just felt like I was with like a hometown friend that's the best way yeah they're just they're very funny personable people and again, like, and when I was at um, VidCon, like a- even after Creator Summit, we were like, Cameron and I were sitting down eating, um, like just eating in like one of the YouTube rooms. We were the, like one of the only people there. And this is like six months later, hadn't seen them since. And Zach was working in the corner and saw Cameron and I at the table and made a point to come and sit down next to us and just say, Stop, hey, what's up? So like, what's cute. going on? You know, like, and he's like literally like giving notes on a video, like working, but he took the time to just like say hi for a few minutes. Yeah. And I was just like, those are the, those are the real people. This is my theory is that the real ones always find each other. Mm -hmm. There's definitely some shady people in YouTube, like some gross, just like egotistical people in the space. Like that's just fact. We've seen it. It's not news, but I think that. If you're a real one, you find the real ones. The fake ones will find the fake ones. You're right. That's why we really have nothing bad to say about these people because we would never take the time to go say hi to what, like Logan Paul. Right. You know what I mean? Like I think that's a safe person that I can say I don't care about, and I don't care. Like I don't. Like like I just don't care about it. You know who I did, who I've never said hi to, and I and I feel like we've seen a million times is David Dobrik. I can't. (laughs) I can't do it, Haley. (laughs) I. Literally, we saw him at VidCon. We saw him at the streamies. We sat right next to him at the we streamies. Sat next we saw him to in the him Burbank the airport. Not a single time did we ever say hi in like in very close Literally, proximity. I have a video of him and that you can insert. I we went to I don't know where we were flying to, but we got there and David Dobrik and Jonah were there and they were running. They were running, running. through the terminal. <laughs> Instagram story of them just like booking it and it looked like it was a joke but it really wasn't and then David was like in yeah, the corner trying to book another flight he was stressed out and I was like I'm not gonna say hi this is not the time to say hi yeah but, but he I, was taking pictures of people yeah he was he's just I, I really think he's probably just as nice he's like the yeah. Ellen I, he's like the Ellen of YouTube he really is he really is you want to know who else that you haven't mentioned I'm very upset about who Remy. Oh my gosh. Why would why would why? we mention Remy? Because that was my dream oh collab. Oh my gosh, yeah. That was my dream collab. I love Remy. I <sighs> love her. She is also, I feel like, one of those people where we haven't had a chance to really like hang out, but I swear to you right. that it we could and it would just it would be, be normal. so normal and easy. She is yeah, just she's, she's so she's fun. sweet and nice. Like she did a collab with us. I remember I think I just text her one day or like DM'd I was her. So I was so nervous. I was well, because so she nervous. how did she find us? I don't well, I met know. Well, I met her at VidCon. Yeah. Or, not at VidCon. I met her at Creator Summit. But I don't think yeah. I think because I went up to her and I was like, I think I talked to her about you and how much you loved her. <laughs> <laughs> That's always my go-to. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow, yeah, I think I just DM'd her on Instagram, and then she like gave me her number, and then she said, "Yeah, I'm down to collab." And then she like made a like she, we ran her vlog about. I stop. I literally, I literally squealed when I say that she is one of my favorite YouTubers of all time. I've been watching this girl since like pretty much her channel started, and to collab with her, I was like derealizing. I was like, "This is n- none of this is real. This can't be real." That is like I've been watching yeah. you on YouTube forever and like you know like you 
I'm on. I'm in your vlog. You're you're in our video. Like it doesn't make any sense. That I feel like had to be the peak, like the peak moment where you're like, the this is the world that I'm in now. Yeah. That that was your dream collab, and now you're on like it was a DM like, basis. Like you can talk to her whenever you want. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's really weird because I just think about those times, like sitting like in high school, like my senior year, like doing homework and like watching her vlogs and like watching like Alicia Marie or whatever. And then, like, just wanting so bad. Like, I knew, like, I know if they met me, they would love me. Like, I know, like, we're meant to be friends. Like, I would say it all the time. Like, th like those were my people. Yeah. And, like, people have, I've always loved watching. And then to, and to be in that space with them and, like, for, like, Remy to be in a video and just, like, if I could tell myself. If you could tell. If I could, if I could tell myself. Like, I, I just, like, I, I would know that. My 17 year old self would never have believed that. It's insane. Never. Because it's literally, because even then I won, I was like, I want to be on YouTube. <laughs> like, I want to be a YouTuber. But that was before being a YouTuber was cool. Right. You know what I mean? I was just like, this looks like so much fun. I want to do this. Ugh, weird. It's just weird. Life is weird. Life is so weird. But that was one of those moments I was like, damn, that's yeah. crazy. I think it's so fascinating all the different people we get to meet and how on the internet, right? You think you judge people and I guess how they're doing in life, how well off they are by the amount of followers they have or mm -hmm. like their aesthetic or their vibe or their Instagram. And it's, I mean, everyone knows like the internet isn't real, blah, blah, blah. But it's really fascinating to see what the realities are of each individual person's life and especially like the distribution of wealth in this world and how yeah. not everyone is in the same boat at all, but you really would never knew, know that because you have different people who are like having like a big channel. Like, first of all, like, um, like Remy has her channel and then like the Try Guys have their channel, but you have so many different types. Like Remy has to pay certain people. The Try Guys are splitting their money up differently. It's just like, you really never know what people's individual lives are like. And I feel oh, 100%. like- 100%, and everyone always like assumes every YouTuber is like a millionaire. Oh yeah. Because- and a lot of them are. A lot of them are. <laughs> but a lot of them aren't. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm assume, I think everyone we mentioned is, but- Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but you're right. It's just it's very fascinating to see. And I also feel like it, this being in this space, having this type of job, it's so different than having the normal job. Obviously, we get your weekly paycheck because in this job, money comes and goes so fast. It's almost like monopoly. It's Yeah, it is. You've been playing too much. <laughs> you've been playing monopoly way too much. But it's like you can have like you can get paid like a chunk of money that you're like, oh, this is a lot of money at one time. But then no money comes after that. Right. And it's just so and I think that's why it's weird being in this space and being also like in quarantine, because you feel like we're we're in the world where you don't get paid unless you do something like unless you're yeah. getting another deal or hustling for this or hustling for that. You don't just like get a check for like being a worker. So it's it's just a whole different mentality and world that I guess you have to accept going into because I think a lot of people who want to be a YouTuber and make a lot of money, sure, you can do that. But just the whole way you view a job is so radically different. There's just, there's no way that anyone's going to be able to get on YouTube with the sole objection. Is that the right word? Objective. Of, objective, sorry. <laughs> the sole objective is to make money. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's it's never gonna happen for you. <laughs> like that's all you want because it does not, getting on YouTube does not equate to monetary success. Like you have to be passionate about it because it's so, everything's so saturated and there's so many people trying to do like what you're yeah. doing. So if you don't have that passion and you can't stick out, like you're not gonna find any success at nope. all. And that's what's sad. Even people who are really, really talented, that just doesn't matter. I mean, it matters, but like it doesn't guarantee yeah. anything. It doesn't guarantee anything. And I feel like now almost, and I'm seeing more, which is what it stresses me out is because growing up, I feel like I got to skate by a lot and I got to not put as much effort into things because I was just like, I was naturally kind of gifted at school or doing little things or I could like 
I had my personality to rely on. But out here, it's like everyone has that. So you have yeah. to work harder than everyone else. <laughs> Most yeah. of the time. There are obviously those YouTubers out there who put out a, an hour and a half story time about doing something really stupid and, and get a lot of views. Tana. for now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, I, what was my point here? Oh, yeah. I feel like um, even now, at like AdSense, like even when we do, like there are some videos that we can monetize and we, it, it's nothing. I like, yeah, and that's what blows my mind. I'm like, even if we could monetize all our videos, obviously that'd be nice. That'd really, really yeah. help. But just yeah. like seeing like one video. Okay, for example, I don't have a problem saying this. We put out a video that we were actually able to monetize a couple weeks ago called Sweat on Me. And it has like about 200,000 views. And we made, uh -huh. I think, $250 from that, which like, yeah. That's not like that's not that's nice, but also if you're thinking about you're putting out one video a week and you're paying a bunch of people, it's just like that's not realistic at yeah. all to rely yeah. on ads. And so it's like you know you can't even come into I feel like this world unless you're planning on becoming a brand and doing more than just YouTube videos. It's just at this point, yeah. it's just a platform for everyone. And I mm -hmm. feel like I hear that from other YouTubers, like Cassie has built a whole empire. And, and yeah. AdSense is, I guarantee you, probably not her main source of income. She's got so many other things going on. It's just like, if you're not ready to be a business person, this isn't for you. And yeah. that's why I feel like if Cameron wasn't around, I don't, I could not imagine like all of us being in this place. YouTube, just like everyone who knows anything about anything, knows that YouTube isn't forever. Like you're, you're not always going to be relevant. You're not always gonna have people wanting to listen to you. Or just one day right. people can just be over YouTube. There could be like something else that pops up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Being in this in this space, I mean, it's very touch and go. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I it's swear It's scary, to but you. it's like, I, I feel like it's worth the risk. But at the same time, it's like, it could but all you know just what? end one day. <laughs> yeah, but isn't every job kind of like that? I mean, you hear all the time about companies going under, restructuring, uh, yeah. going in a different direction. It's like no, no one so has true. a guarantee. No job. one's secure. No. <laughs> no one's At secure. least in this, it's like we know we can do all that we can. I mean, yeah. That, uh, as opposed to being at a company where it's like, oh, well, we're just uh, getting rid of your position. So <laughs> you're yeah. out of options. I remember yeah. like as soon as all of this kind of started my family always was like all right what's your backup plan like what you know this is only gonna last so long so enjoy it while it lasts not in like this a bad was way my backup plan. It was just <laughs> <laughs> this is it this is plan b <laughs> this is <laughs> it's just i think and it wasn't in like a mean way it was in a realistic way but i think about that a lot yeah. it's like one day my like you're again you're on your last ankle i my knees are yeah. not doing well it's like we can't do this forever so i want like the whole goal is to build something that lasts longer than our bones do right not very long not very long not and i think it's long. also very frustrating for me i i and it maybe just be like an ego thing but it frustrates me when i feel like other people are able to have so much more success. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Like, are we not interesting enough? Like, why do people not like wanna watch the vlogs or do this? Like, is it the content? Like, am I just not good at it? And I think it's really mm -hmm. easy for anyone so on YouTube to compare. to compare and to really get in your head. Oh yeah. Because if you yeah, think about the it- The numbers there are... game and the, and, the, and the title chasing, the SEO chasing and like, you know, the, you see someone doing something and you're like, oh my God, like they're having so much success. Like, let me do that. But then you're losing what, like your own personal flair. Mm -hmm. It's like this fine balance of like, yeah, like sometimes you have to play the game, but also sometimes you just need to like lean into what makes you, you. Yeah. And I think that's hard to do because it's, it's way more vulnerable than like, oh, I'm going to do this tag challenge that everyone else is doing and getting a lot of clicks. Right. Right. It is such a balance. I think before, I think now, I think now we've finally got that balance. Or at least mm -hmm. I feel less pressure personally. It's like, 
yeah. with the music and stuff. I think before I was very, I we used to be like, I, I'm not doing this unless it's like my favorite song, or I, I or I would like skip a lot of songs. I would feel like, oh, there's too much pressure to do that song. I don't want to oh, do it just because it's number one. Don't get me started. Despacito. Don't get me started. Despacito. <laughs> Don't get me started. You have to, you can't be on YouTube and not chase, like, you don't have to chase trends, but you have to play the game. And that is just mm-hmm. a reality of it. So you just have to learn to enjoy playing the game. Cause yeah. <laughs> it's about the algorithm and you have to find, and especially with what we do, it's like, we need our videos to pop up other places, but we also mm-hmm. like, again, we can do some songs that we just love and people love that our fans love them regardless. So yeah, it's, um, but it's so hard not to look at other people and be like, oh my God, like their vlogs are getting a million views and they're just like sitting there talking. Like what, like why don't people like me that much? Also frustrating because when you feel like you're putting in so much energy and effort and you feel like you have to work harder than other people, it can be like really frustrating because it's not fair. YouTube isn't fair. Yeah. YouTube isn't fair. And also it feels very personal Mm -hmm. whenever you're putting yourself out there and people are not like receiving it how you want them to and it feels like oh it's like a it's like a me problem this isn't like a business problem this is like this is like inward this is inward (laughs) and it's hard to not get caught up in that i think that's why a lot of people have that's why i feel like youtube can exacerbate is that is that the right word exacerbate exacerbate yeah um mental health problems and especially it's like and again someone with like anxiety and a lot of insecurities already it's like a lot of times it does bring out the worst in me and so i think you have Mm -hmm. to go into youtube also having a thick skin and being able to really have a support system around you to keep you grounded and Mm -hmm. i just got asked the other day um i was in i was doing pr training (laughs) with a media company and they asked me they're like so how do you avoid the negative comments and I was just, I like, I, I guess I never really thought about it, but it's just like you have to put your blinders on and just listen to your friends and family. Mm-hmm. I feel like, I mean, you can uh, take people's opinion and, and it's valid, especially like your fans, but also there's so much negativity and just bullshit on the internet. And so you God, almost yeah. have to just like view comments as not real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard though but it's so true these people know nothing about you nothing about except you except for the fact that you make videos and which it's is just one part of you what's your music recommendation of the week kebab oh don't do this you know what i haven't really been listening to music this week that's weird i know it is weird i, need to get I feel on like my i've just been you know what book. i've been doing i've been listening to a podcast this week what podcast i've been listening to zane and heath's podcast I love Zane and Heath's podcast. It's really That's fun. That's what made me want to do a podcast. Besides TK, yeah. I really I really like Zane and Heath's podcast. It's really it's really funny. It's lighthearted. They're yeah. just naturals. So it just good feels at it. like you're hanging out with them. And that's I really enjoy that. That's yeah, and I feel like that's people like enjoy about our podcast too, which yeah. I love. Hmm, what have I been listening to? I didn't ask you. Hmm. Speaking of podcasts, there's a podcast that I have been loving. I, I don't know if I talked about it or not. Um, I Way from Jamila Jamil, the girl. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, it's a very good podcast. I love her voice is just so soothing. <laughs> <laughs> and she talks about really important topics in like a really relatable way, like not like on a high horse type of way, just yeah. like a just like a down ass human is what she is. And I can really appreciate that. I guess it's, that's the that's podcast, podcast of, the week. of the week. <laughs> you know what I want to start doing, though, too? I want to start what? recommending, um, uh, like, shows to watch. Because okay. I feel very passionate about that. I know you do. I'll I know go you first. Do. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. I Let me guess. would like to personally recommend that everyone listening to this watch Shit's Creek. That is my number. If you can only watch one show, please watch that because it's a, it's light. It's easy to watch because it's so light. It's digestible. It's like 20, 20 to 30 minutes. And it's very, very funny. And it's got a storyline, but it's not something that you have to like dedicate your entire life to, but you'll want to. And I think the way it's the first time that a show's ever done this, the way it's talked about prejudice and or like not talked about but dealt with like homosexuality and like 
um, prejudice and things like that is so unique because Shit's Creek is set up in a world where that doesn't exist. So they ne- it's never preachy. They never sh- like shove anything down your throat. It's just this magical land where people are allowed to be people. And that's just never even a plot point because that like prejudice doesn't exist. And it's fascinating because when you're watching it, you don't realize that it's, you don't think it's intentional, but then you're just like laughing your head off and you're like, oh my God, this is a beautiful, this is a better world. And I think that's why it's mm-hmm. so beautiful. Cute. What's your recommendation? <laughs> <laughs> Everything I've been watching has been so dark. It's been so, so, so dark. It's, I mean, I've said this I've in the last three podcasts because I won't stop watching crime documentaries. I don't I just get started it. The Innocent Files. Um, I finished Making a Murderer. I just, like, any, like, I pretty much watched most crime docs by this point. But you want to know something that I am so tired of you recommending me shows and things like that, like Shit's Creek, which is, you know, a sitcom, but you won't watch The Office, which everyone has watched in the world. The Office is, I think, more for straight people. I don't think so. I think everyone loves The Office. That's why it's The Office. Uh, then why can't I get through it? Why can't I get Caleb, through it? Caleb, you've watched like the first three episodes. No, I've watched season one. I'm like halfway through season two. It's just, I never... The season one has seven episodes. <sighs> I don't know why I can't do it. I don't know why I can't do so, it. And it's a fair So until point to you make. watch that, no, do not come for me what? before that's, anything you, because the it, office is, is a staple in every household in America. Okay. 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 Well, you know what? If you want to lower your quality of life to prove a point, that's your business because I've learned, you know what my intention for the week is? You know what my intention for oh the week is? God. It's to live and let live. I am so tired of trying to help people <laughs> and give them a better life and show them the right way. If people want to be self-destructive, then I'll let them be. You are psycho. You are dead ass. You're crazy. (laughs) (laughs) You're crazy. Oh my gosh. Um, Just so you know, a few seconds ago, I realized that Cameron's phone had stopped recording. So I cannot wait to see what we have for this visual podcast. If you're watching visually, um, I hope that you've enjoyed it. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) I even, I like, I got, I didn't get cute today. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to leave people with. Your phone stopped recording. Oh, by the way, my hair is blue. I forgot to mention, or purple. So if you're not watching, I dyed my hair. Don't even notice. (laughs) It's just normal. I'll just show up one day and my hair is fucking like yellow. (laughs) Like... (laughs) No one bats an eye. <laughs> That's what would happen. Unless I want you to do the Gaga Monster Ball tour hair. Oh, I would do that one hundred percent. You need to, that would look so good on you. Um, if I don't get a haircut soon, I'm gonna die, and that's what I want to end this on. I need a and haircut, and I'm gonna do it myself. What are you doing? You said it sucked. I know, so I started again. Don't take don't take me away from them. All right. Well, um, what? Oh, wait. There was a, what's the other thing that we do? On this thing? Oh, yeah. What's your intention for the week, bitch? I'm just kidding. That's a minute. I'm just kidding. I was kidding. (laughs) Haley, what's your... (laughs) That That was so harsh. What's your your intention for the week? No, I'm leaving that in. I'm leaving that in. (sighs) Oh, my God. I don't know. (sighs) These intentions, man. They just come so fast. Like, I I haven't followed through with a single (laughs) one. I (laughs) haven't... Not one. I remember like one. Well, last week mine was to get off my period, which I did. Good for you. But it's not up to me. And then <laughs> I said I want to play The Sims. Didn't do that. I think that's a, um, that's a good intention. You should still keep. What? Play The Sims. Get off my period? No. Well, yeah, you should always <laughs> keep that one. But play The Sims. I'm just so... I need to finish this puzzle. I mean, I just feel like my int- my intentions are more of a to-do list. <laughs> Intentions to take out the trash. <laughs> yeah. Juice, you've got to you've got to have less hair. And I don't know what you're gonna do about it, but you need that's on you. Um All right. All right, well, um this has been fun. Make sure you're following us at, at Coffee with My Ex, at Haley Jordan 12, and at the Fitness Marshall. Yes, and this is our longest podcast we've ever done. So look at that. Coffee with my ex. 
was like especially like goofy. <laughs> 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 